Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. My business never to call me, and yeah. So, E3 is here, and yeah, a lot of stuff to talk about. So, yeah, it was really hard making E3 videos when E3 is happening. But yeah, I'm gonna try my best, and uh, let's start with EA. EA, nothing, nothing really happened. There was nothing they showed was interesting. Now, the one thing that was interesting was Sea of Solitudes. That looked pretty good and yeah that's that's all all right so to make this short they really didn't show anything uh battlefield 5 trailer came out there's gonna be more dlc for battlefront 2 and ea announced a new game uh command and conquer and it's an app game and yeah they they spend the most on this they spend like 15 minutes just showing gameplay of this and everybody was like we don't give a fuck about this by all the games they had they show Command and Conquer gameplay, not Battlefield 5. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's all that EA showed. Uh, now, my score for this, uh, I give it a 2 out of 10. Really nothing. Just nothing. And also, sports games they announce, and uh, yeah, no, I don't think most of the people care. Alright, so now, Microsoft's E3. And I gotta say, this might be one of their best E3s. And you know what? To go even further, this might be the best of this year. Now, I know everybody didn't have their conference yet, but by surprise-wise, yeah, this might be the best E3 of this year. Now, look at PlayStation. PlayStation, they're not gonna do anything special. They already announced that. They said they're gonna pull up the couch again like they did it with PSX. And Nintendo, well, maybe. I don't think they're gonna have any surprises because, all right, we already know they're gonna pull out uh, Super Smash Bros., uh, Pokemon, and uh, maybe they might, you know, show a trailer of Metro. So yeah, they're not gonna have any surprises. Now, Ubisoft, Bethesda, EA, and Square Enix. Now, they'll probably have surprises, but they're not gonna be as big as, you know, Microsoft, PlayStations, or Nintendo's because in their side, they can announce third party and their first party games. They can reveal games that aren't from their company, like PlayStation can announce a Capcom game, or a Ubisoft game, or a Bethesda game. Bethesda can only announce a Bethesda game. So that's why, you know, PlayStation, Microsoft, and Nintendo is the three big ones. And yeah, that's why I say Microsoft is the best out of this year. Alright, so what did they show? Uh, first reveal was a new Halo game, Halo Infinite. Now, they didn't really show too much, they only, it was just a teaser, that's it. It was just Master Chief just holding his helmet, that's it. And then you see like an open field of this one map, I forgot what it was called, but yeah. Um, now, my little theory that open map, they're they're kind of, I guess, revealing there's going to be Battle Royale. Or maybe it's just, you know, a big-ass map, and I'm just being a dumbass. I don't know. But I assume that because, you know, Battle Royale has to be everywhere. After that, there was Ori the Blind Forest 2. And then, after that, they showed a game called Shakiro, and this looks badass as fuck. So, this is another Souls gameplay game. I mean, you know, from software, it doesn't make anything other than those type of games. So, yeah, this looks great. Like, the gameplay, I could see they're changing. It's like, the gameplay looks more fast and fluid and if you skip a few trailers uh we got crackdown 3 finally just just footage just just like just like a video of crackdown just something to acknowledge yeah crackdown 3 exists all right so yeah in this game it looks like terry cruz is gonna be a part of the crackdown 3 characters now look at this trailer graphic wise it didn't look like they improved nothing like maybe a little bit but not much and at the end they gave us another release date it's coming february 2019 so yeah, and for some reason, I feel like that's another lie. Now, the reason why I thought Microsoft's E3 was great because it just kept showing games. It, it kept hitting you with that world premiere, exclusive, world premiere, exclusive. Love that, but I felt like they should have just stopped at Crackdown 3 and maybe gave it a few minutes, you know, explaining the story, uh, the gameplay, showing some gameplay, but they just kept that game and just kept on going. Like, I feel like Microsoft doesn't believe in this game. Like, they just failed it like all right whatever you're you're in game pass all right so yeah hopefully people buy game pass for this game after that they showed metroid which looks amazing dying like two finally now i thought <laughs> i thought you know the meme uh they're gonna put out another dlc no they, they're finally making a sequel because they've been supporting the first dying light for about three years right now they put out expansions and recently a battle royale now it's great giving out more content to a game that is already a year old but I think it's about time right now. It's been three years, and I think they should make it two. And that's what they did. So, uh, first Dying Light was great. Uh, second one, hopefully it's great. Now, I have one fear. All right. This kind of reminded me of Shadow of War. And you know the part where you see, oh shit, everything's changing. Now, 
I'm having a feeling that, you know, depending who you left it in charge, just like in Shadow of War, you the environment changes. Like, that's giving me a flashback of Shadow of War, you know. Uh, like, a part of the map looks different because you put somebody in charge. That's probably what they're going to do. And hopefully, they're not going to do anything bullshit like they did with Shadow of War. Then after that, they show some Kingdom Hearts, Forza Horizon. And it looks like maybe, you know, Rare is going to put some content in Sea of Thieves. Then after that, Microsoft announced they have bought some studios. Alright, so they bought the NT8. I can't even pronounce that. So the head of this company is Daryl Gallagher. And he was the head of Crystal Dynamics and was responsible of Tomb of the Raider. Second studio is Undead Labs and they're responsible of City of the K 1 and 2. Uh, third is Playground Games, and they were responsible of Forza, the, all the Forza games. Fourth studio is Ninja Theory, and they were responsible of Hellblade and DMC's 2013 version. Now, I thought this was a good catch from Microsoft, like Ninja Theory, the, the people who were responsible of Hellblade, like winning so many awards, and also DMC having, you know, an action, fast-paced game. So... Yeah, this is this is good. This is a good match. You know, some people are theorizing. You know, <laughs> uh, Ninja Theory is probably gonna finish Scalebound. Now that could be it because you know they, they look capable enough to make a Scalebound. Now I don't think Ninja Theory would do that because you know the reason why they joined Microsoft is because Microsoft told them that they will have fully creative freedom whatever game they're making. And now the fifth studio is Compulsion Games and they were the people who made We Happy Few. Now seeing these studios resumes, hopefully with the right budget they can make an amazing ass game, a triple A game. Because of course, you know, some of these studios are indie, of course they won't have an amazing resume other than Ninja Theory and Playground Games. So yeah, it's great hearing that Microsoft is investing, finally investing on in-house studios. But now here's the thing, you probably won't be seeing any of these guys' games until maybe after two years, or maybe until the next generation, or at least next year. So, this year is still no games. Now, they have revealed the new Gears of War, but that's coming next year. Microsoft has nothing this year, and it's disappointing. Hopefully, Microsoft learns this year, because this year has been their worst. First party games that came out this year has been disappointing, like they've been having bad launches, uh, they've been having glitches, no content, and been delayed. So yeah, again, hopefully Microsoft learns this year. I like that one part where they were talking about Game Pass and they were like, oh guys, you can play The Division or um, uh, Elder Scrolls Online. And it was like, no one's playing that trash. All right, so they showed The Division 2 and uh, I really don't care. It looks like the first Division. <laughs> After that, they showed DMC5 and holy shit. At first I thought, all right, this might be Gears. Actually, no, holy shit. Wait, Doom? No, DMC, holy shit! I knew this was DMC because I heard Demon Hunter. At first, I thought it was Doom, but I saw the white hair. I'm like, no, this is Devil May Cry. Then after that, they announced that there's going to be DLC for Cuphead. Oh, man. Cuphead was my game of the year when that when that game came out. When was that? I think last year? Not sure, but yeah, Cuphead, I I'm excited for DLC. You know, new bosses. Uh, also, I'm hearing new, like, a soundtrack that was playing in when that trailer was, was out. And then after that, they showed Jump Force. Also, guys, just a reminder, um, I'm not doing I'm not doing this in order, so I'm just picking out randomly. So, it's obvious that Microsoft is trying their best to bring more Japanese audiences to the Xbox by bringing more JRPGs and just Japanese games, just so they can sell 100 more units in that entire country. And then after that, they showed Gears of War 5. Oh, yeah, and also Battletoads. Now, Gears of War 5, this is looking like they're finally putting story in Gears of War 5. No, no, okay, they had story in Gears of War, in the other Gears of War, but this looks more serious. It looks more uh, cinematic, more dramatic. There we go. Now, I don't know what's happening because I haven't beat the last Gears of War, so yeah, uh, no spoilers, please. Well, I'm probably not going to care. But yeah, looks... Looks okay. Um, that's This is also coming next year, 2019. And yeah, that is the end. Oh yeah, and also they showed Cyberpunk. Uh, and that looked amazing. Alright, so my thoughts. Um, I give this conference a 8 out of 10. Now, I would have given this an 8 out of 10 if they had games that were coming this year. They didn't, so yeah, that's why I give it an 8 out of 10. I was hoping for games coming out this year, like, uh, not just for me, just for people who have an Xbox. I was hoping to see newer AAA IPs, but what do I see again? I see Halo, Gears, and Forza. The only three IPs that Xbox depends on. They have to break this cycle. They have to bring new IPs. That's what I want from Microsoft, but it might it might look like they, they'll break that cycle after this generation. Like, next generation, it lo it's looking good for Microsoft.